Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how you can access your library components from your JavaScript files. So I'll show you guys how you can access your properties, update those properties, and also how you can access any or call any public method you have on your uh, library component, similar to how, for example, you would call an API. This is very useful if you are working with some sort of JavaScript library. In this case, for example, I have a calendar library known as a full calendar JS, and I'll show you guys the code for this at the end of the video. So I'm using my library component as the back end. So for example, I can come over here, select a you know chunk of time, create a new event. Let's say I give it some random name. And this is actually calling my library component in the background and storing it in my database. And I also have the ability to actually move it around. So I can go ahead and move it around. It will go ahead and again call my library component, update it, and even if I reload, uh, it still keeps everything, it's loading it from the database. So that's it. Let's go ahead and see actually how we can do that right now. So guys, I have gone ahead and created a new library component. I have named it a calendar and it's a fresh library component. So I have an empty blade file as well as the simple, you know, backend PHP file. And as you can see, we have a white screen. So let's go ahead and first see how we can actually access the component from JavaScript. So first thing to keep in mind, guys, you need to go ahead and do this inside your library components blade file or if you have like a full page component then you'll obviously have access to it anywhere so we need to go ahead and add an inline uh, script tag so i'll just go ahead and do that real quick and inside here first step we need to make sure our library component is actually initialized because if we try to access the component before it's initialized we are going to get an error now there are a few different ways you can do that the easiest way is we can just go ahead and say document dot add event listener and so we can go ahead and add and listen for an event known as live wire initialize, right? I showed you guys the same thing on our wire navigate where we did live wire uh, navigated. So this is kind of similar. We can actually go ahead and still use a uh, live or navigated, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, initialized, okay? Just like this. I think I have a typo here. Initialized, yeah. That's it. And so of course you need to go ahead and pass it in a function. In just case, I'll just go ahead and pass a simple function to this. You can also pass it, pass it an arrow function. It's up to you guys. So to just check if it's working, I'll just go ahead and do a simple console log. So let's go back. Let's do a quick reload guys. See if we are getting the log. As you can see, we're getting high. So this basically tells us that, hey, our library component was initialized successfully. Now, the way you can access your library component, guys, is by doing at this. And again, make sure you're doing this inside your library components plate file. So this will give you a JavaScript representation of your component, right? So anything you can do with your component, you can pretty much do with this one, right? You can, of course, uh, store it in a variable. For example, do, I don't know, component equals this. And then you can basically do whatever you want with your uh, component. So for example, first step, let's go ahead and uh, see how we can access a public property, okay? So what I'll do is I open up the PHP file. I'm gonna go ahead and define a new public property. I'll name it title. And uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, let's call it uh, YouTube, okay? So first thing is we need to, we need to, we're gonna see how we can access this public property. So you can just go ahead and do at this dot title, or you can store it in a variable and say, uh, component dot title. It's that simple. So as I said, this is a JavaScript representation of our component. So we will have access to all our public properties. Again, the emphasis is on public properties. If it's protected or private, obviously we won't have access to it. So uh, let's open up the terminal and do a quick reload. And as you guys can see, we are getting YouTube. Now, one more thing you can do guys is you can also go ahead and update these so for example in this case i can say title equals uh, i don't know twitter or some other website or whatever name you guys want and this will go ahead and act similar to something like wire model now with wire model it wasn't live so in order for the changes to actually take effect we had to perform some sort of action maybe met button call form submit something like that so this is somewhat similar to that so if i save this and i'll do a reload as you guys can see, there are no network requests, even though it technically updated it on the front end side. But if you want to send a network request, you can do, for example, something called uh, .set. So we can say component.set, and this is similar to the 
uh, dollar sign set we use on the magic actions video guys so in this case i can say update title to live update let's do something different and what this will do guys it will go ahead and perform a live update and by a live update it, i mean it's similar to wire model live it will immediately send a network request and update the value so let's go ahead do a quick reload and if we take a look at the network calls now we have a method of update and if i look at the request payload we can see that it actually updated the top title to live update right so you can use any of these depending on if you need it to happen right away or not so if you want it to happen right away you can use dot set but if you want it to maybe happen later on maybe you want to change multiple values and then update them all together then you can go ahead and use this method now with set you can still go ahead and make it not be live by passing in a third argument of false so this will make it so it's not live so if i uh, clear the network request and i reload again as you guys can see we are not we didn't send a network request so you can still use set if you guys like just make sure you set the last argument to false so this is how we can actually access our properties so the next part is calling public methods on our component so any public method you have on your component is technically accessible from your front end side so your users can call them which is something you need to be careful about so if something isn't supposed to be used don't make it public but in this case i will go ahead and create a public method of let's say say or log hello and what i'll do in this method guys i will just go ahead and import the laravel log facade and i'll just log hello right the same thing that the method name says okay so in this case we're going to call this method from our javascript so the way you do it guys is very simple we can go ahead and access our component or if you want you can directly just do at this both of them are exactly identical i'm just using the component so i don't have to type at this every single time and in this case we can go ahead and do dot whatever our method name is so in this case it was log hello i can just go ahead and say log hello that's it guys right and if you had any arguments you can also pass them over here right it's just a simple uh, method call so that's all we have to do guys so let's go ahead now i do need to open up our uh, log file so i'll open it up i have some existing logs so i'll just get rid of them so let's go ahead do a quick reload as you can see we actually did perform a request which is obviously the library needs to do that and if you take a look at it look at the payload you guys can see it's actually calling the method log hello right which is the method we actually wanted to call and if i take a look at our log files we can see hello right which is basically what this does and if i reload again we should see another hello so that's the basic stuff now the way these work guys let me show you guys the actual uh, html inspect if we inspect it and we take a look at it at this is actually window.livewire.find right so you can of course do this manual yourself if you know the library component id but this is what's happening under the hood when we use at this now whenever you call any of these methods if i'm not mistaken it returns a promise so you can actually go ahead and do something like dot then and you know get a response back so in this case i can go ahead and pass it in. maybe an arrow function you can also pass in a regular function and if we were to have some sort of response you can store it or get that response in this case i'm going to say console.log response so right now if i reload obviously we are going to get null but if i want it i could for example here return uh success right so if i were to return something i can actually receive it on this then and echo it out so if i reload now we get success right so if you want to pass or return something you can actually use this as some sort of API if you need it and return some results over here, right? Of course, this could be JSON, something like that. So that's also something you can do as well. Now, if you want to pass in arguments to your methods, you can also do that. So let's say on this say hello, I had a message, MSG for message. So I can also do that as well, right? So pass something to the method. So in this case, I'll say hello uh, YouTube, right? So you can also do this if you want to right so if i reload now and i'll look at the log file as you guys can see we get hello youtube so it's quite flexible basically anything you can imagine with these method calls you are also able to do over here so that's the overall basics of it guys you can of course go ahead and play around with it this gives you an javascript representation of your component 
So if you want, you can go ahead and play around with it and see what other things you can do. You can also, I believe, uh, uh, refresh your components. So just do component.refresh, things like that. All of those are accessible over here. So now that I have covered this, guys, let me go ahead and show you guys the calendar component and how that actually works in a more realistic example. Okay, guys, so I have gone ahead and imported the code for the calendar that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Now, I'm not going to be coding the entire thing because then the video would be too long. So I'll just show you guys the parts that are actually important. And some of you probably are not going to use full calendar JS, so it's going to be not that useful for you. But basically, I have the code over here, guys. I'm using, I'm adding it as a CDN. Of course, you can import it from your, inside your JavaScript file. I have a div. So usually with these uh, co library components, you have some sort of div or something like that, canvas, whatever. Uh, and that's going to be updated once you initialize the component. One thing you want to make sure is generally you want to go ahead and add a vigor ignore because if you don't add that anytime you perform a method call, it will go ahead and actually reset this back to the div and delete everything else that the library added. So wire ignore is something that is very uh, important. And then after that, again, I'm doing document.add event listener. So I'm making sure my component is initialized. If you're using wire navigate, of course, you can use navigate it over here. After that, I'm getting my get document by ID. Basically, I'm getting this div, right? And then I'm initializing the calendar object, right? So I'm calling full calendar and I'm initializing it. After that, we are setting some configs, right? Some configuration isn't really that important uh, for what we are covering on the video. After that, I'm setting the initial values that is shown when we initially load the calendar, right? So these are actually set by this events variable. And as you guys can see, I'm using at JSON events. So this at JSON is actually a blade directive. Okay, so this isn't really uh, library related. And so I'm actually, I have inside this dollar sign variable, all these, as you can see, we have four already, all of these inside an associative array, right? So this add JSON, as you guys can tell, it will convert your PHP arrays into a JSON array. So it's consumable by your JavaScript. So this is a nice trick to use. And I'll show you guys what I'm doing basically on my render method. I have a simple array. And then again, this is just for testing purposes. I'm loading the entire database I have for event because I don't have that many of them. And I'm adding them one by one to this events array, right? Associative array. And I'm then passing it to my blade file, right? Now for the format of this, of course, you need to look at JavaScript library you're using and what format it expects. In this case, I already looked at the documentation. So they accept an ID, title, a start and end date. So I'm just passing it in using uh, event JSON. So after that, you can listen for events on your components. So with a full calendar JS, they have a couple of them. I just have added two of them here. So one of them is known as a select event, and you can pass in a function as a callback. So this function is called every time a select event happens. So what is a select event? It's basically you selecting something on the calendar, as you guys can see, right? So this is a select event, okay? Super simple stuff. So this is called every time you select something, and it will call your method that you pass in and it will pass it in all the data as an argument, right? So what is data? Data is like what date it is, when it starts, when it ends, things like that, okay? So in this case, I'll just, you know, ask the user for an event name. I'm just using JavaScript prompts. As you can see, this is what the prompt does. So I ask them for a name. I'll make sure the name isn't empty. And then after that, I'm using the technique I showed you guys. I'm doing at this followed by the event name, sorry, the method name. So in this case, I have a method of a new event on my library component. I'll show you guys that code in a second. And just I pass it the event name that I just asked the user. And then this data argument has a start and end date. Okay. So it's part of the documentation, guys. Just know that these do indeed exist inside this data, which is the start date as well as the end date for this kind of block on the calendar. Okay. And then after that, I'll do dot then to make sure it was successful. I get the ID back for um, the event we just created in our database and I'll add that on the calendar. Okay. So basically when I do this testing YouTube, basically I add that last block on the calendar. This is a piece of code that does it. This is a bit unrelated, but basically it's over here. Okay. And then I'm listening for another event known as event drop and I'm doing the exact same thing, guys. I'm doing it at this dot update event and I pass it all the updated stuff, right? So what is this event drop? It's basically when you drag something and you move it somewhere else. Okay. This is as an event uh, drop, right? 
and it calls this method, right? So basically, in this case, we're using our library components similar to how you would use an API. So instead of creating an API, we are using our uh, library component. And then on the component side itself, obviously, if you guys remember, we used new event and update event. It's a super simple method, guys. This is just for testing purposes. I'm just validating the items we receive. So I make sure it's like a valid date or something. You can add all the validation you want over here. And then I just add it to the database. And last but not least, I'm returning the ID of that event, right? Now, of course, on a real application, guys, you need to always authorize, make sure the user actually has access to this calendar or they have the ability to create it. So uh, just something you should always be uh, careful about. And then at the bottom, we have the update. And again, it takes ID of the event we want to update, the name, start date, and end date, does a simple validation, and then updates it. So that's pretty much it, guys. You can actually, again, use JavaScript components with your library components. Just like I mentioned, it's relatively easy to do. Now, if you know beforehand, if you're just starting out a project and you know you have a lot of JavaScript work to do, maybe you don't want to use LiveWire. Uh, I generally prefer to use LiveWire for mostly CRUD-based applications, barely a little bit of JavaScript here and there. But if you find your application is very JavaScript heavy, you need a lot of libraries and you need to create a lot of those yourself, maybe you're better off not using library because it can be a little bit hard to maintain this as it grows. For simple stuff like this, it's totally okay. But I think if it grows and you have a lot of them, it might be hard to maintain uh, with live uh, wire. But that's it, guys, for today's episode. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. If I know the answer, I'll let you guys know. And as always, if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.